Hi guys, Mr. Johnny here. In this video, we're gonna talk about a repair, hopefully successful, of such a device like Walward. This particular specimen is 12 volt, 1 amp. What it does, if you plug it in, if you plug it in and you check the voltage on its output, you see pretty much zero volts. And if you look at the consumption, right now I'm gonna I'm about to show you a device which I'm not didn't make a video about yet. So if you're interested, you can show me your interest in a form of commenting. The device is this. It's an electronic fuse. Basic. Oh, sorry. You can see that the power jumps around. What that means? That means that most likely our problem is a shorted output rectifier. Now this supply is just off the cuff. I have not opened it yet. You can see it's still welded shut. And it doesn't have any screws. So let's see if my hunch is correct. I am saying this. based on my previous experience all right and previous experience experience tells me that most likely our problem is caused by a shorted output rectifier could be a dry capacitor but it looks more like a shorted rectifier Not the safest way. I need a bit more sturdy place. Okay, you saw the, how it works. I'm gonna crack it open off camera and show you the insides. Okay, I made a little crack there, which allows me to poke this tool inside and work it loose. It's not that hard. Yeah, the case is gonna be damaged a little bit, but who cares? It's a bloody wall work. So what if the case is gonna be a little mangled? It's not a specimen for the demo week or anything like that. Smells like it was running hot. Why am I not surprised? Oh, the lighting is just perfect. Typical Johnny. Let's try that. Oh, that's so much better, isn't it? If it wasn't for the shimmer, you see, thanks to 100 hertz pulsing, but you have to bear with that for a while until I make a proper light without any shimmer. Nothing looks blown visually, as it is. It uses a chip. We know that the fuse is all right because we had the consumption. Typical problem might be, well, the visual in inspection tells that capacitors, none of the capacitors are bulged. This could be causing such an issue. That's a bootstrap cap. Or 
this can cause an issue. How about we go and try to beep it out? All right. We put our meter into the beepy beep mode. All right. And we probe across the rectifier, which is right there. And what do you know? It is shorted indeed. How about that? Ain't that a surprise? Not really. Okay, so let's desolder it. And take a closer look. Can I apply a little bit of flux. Because that's a pesky lead free solder. Okie dokie. Let's hoik it out. It is hot for some reason. There we go. You can see it drop right out. Now it's much easier. I usually uh, take them out like that. Then I use desoldering pump because it's a hell of a lot. Because it's quite a bit more effective at sucking the solder when the hole is empty then it can do its best. All right, nice and clean, ready for a new part. Focus, you prick. All right, that is good. Let's see what the diode is. It's a 12 volt power supply again. So it's a diode from a five volt power supply ain't gonna cut it due to higher reverse voltage rating SB5100 uh -huh. that's a 5 amp 100 volt rectifier short key more like short key huh? oh that's funny that's funny indeed maybe I was wrong it beeped out in the circuit like it was shorted, but here it doesn't seem to be. Hmm. It tests all right. Well, that's funny. What else can be shorted here? Oh, could it be the snubber? Let's take a look here. Here you can see an RC network right across this diode. If this capacity is shorted, it can misbehave in such a fashion where, where you would think that it's a diode which is shorted because it's right in parallel on it. With this low value resistor, 68 ohms, that's more than enough to cause a beeper to set off. In a multimeter, it's in a beep mode. All right. Oh, let's try to do it mid-air. It seems like it's a case. Hmm. Let's desolder that. Okay, the offending part is right there. You might be able to see it. Let's try it out. It's right there again. Are you kidding me? <laughs> this power supply is making a fool out of me. Uh, okay, okay. Um, 
the chance that the electrolytic capa electrolytic capacitors are shorted is very slim. Even though they can do that, I would not think it is the case. I'd rather think the cable is somewhere dam is damaged somewhere else. She doesn't look to be. One way to find out. Let's take the cable out of the circuit. One lead is enough. Plus that way you ain't you don't you ain't gonna forget which one is where and mess up the polarity of it. Okay, the cable is one lead is in the air. Let's probe the output of the supply now. Is it the cable indeed? Hmm. Seems like it. Okay, it's just a capacitor charging up and then goes out. Let's try the cable. Yeah, it's a cable, all right. Where is that trick shorted? Okie dokie. The one with a stripe is the positive. Cool. You can see the cable is absolutely out of circuit and yeah, it has developed a short somewhere. Bastard. It looks like a typical 5.5, 2.5 barrel jack. Let's go and double check it. Yeah. It sure looks like it. More like 2.1 though, but mm, I do have a cheap ass connectors like this, which might work. Potentially, that is. Here is. 2.1 sure looks like it's the right socket for it and I know that's 5.5 2.5 so it's got to be that oh no 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 that sorry sorry that's actually the last time I bought it, it it's Again, wrong. That's not the socket I bought last time. I bought this last time, and I'm sure that this is 5.5, 2.5 barrel jack. It uses. It is obviously has a larger pin inside, and it don't fit. So that's gotta be that pesky 2.1 millimeter inner pin. Although I see, I think that this thing should work still. However, it's not the interesting part, is it? The interesting part is how the hell am I gonna find where the short is across this cable? It just happens so. It just happens so. I have uh, made myself. A juicy power supply lately, based on ATX power supply of the computer. You can see I went to the struggle with this one to rewind the transformer, because the transformer installed there was just puny. It was EI28 core, which is not good at all. This transformer is a 225 watt rated. Effectively, you can see the choke has a lots of windings on it. And the windings are made with 9.4 millimeter magnet wires in parallel. That's why it looks so chunky. That is done to for it to handle the current. Long story short, I can use this accompanied with a powerful load to pump 
put basically a powerful load in series with the output of this and then feed it into this cable on the ends. And the thing is that uh, passing like 5 amps or so it should be you should be able to find the hottest spot on it which will tell you where the short is or you can replace the cable as is that is of course if you have it which I don't so yeah or or even if you don't have a supply but you happen to be a motorcycle enthusiast you might be having this around a battery and a bulb from a headlight so let's go and try that oh boy I'm running out of memory let me hold on for a second 